Hi folks, this is Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today I want to show you how to use the Digitrax DigiIPL program. This program is available free from the Digitrax website as part of their Soundloader program. It's used for updating the firmware and their new hardware devices, and it's only available for Windows uh, compatible computers. So Mac people, you're out of luck on this one. Um, once the program is installed on your computer, all you have to do is click the DigiIPL icon and it's ready to roll. comes right up. Notice on the left, here on the screen, on the upper left, we have the communications connection uh, settings. In a second here, I'm going to move the uh, cursor over and we'll uh, select the uh, local net port setting. I know that on this computer uh, that I have the COM12 uh, uh, hooked up to the PR3. So that's what we're going to select and use it. Also, in a second, we can look at the bit rate here, and you'll see that it comes up with 16457. 9600, I believe, is the correct setting for the, uh, for the PR3. Uh, for right now, though, let's go ahead and move on and select a file to uh, work with. I keep all of my downloaded files in one directory. Um, and we can just select on a DT500 and open it. And you can see that that uh, particular file has now been loaded into the program for uploading to a device. All you have to do then is hit the space bar or the start button it has shown here, and uh, the progress will be shown in that ready block above it. Uh, you can uh, update one or five or as many throttles at the same time as you have room to plug them in. Same thing for other devices. Okay, this nice little feature here gives you a lot of other things you can do. So you just hit devices and it opens up this spreadsheet and shows you what is uh, actively uh, uh, attached to Loconet at that time. Notice also that it's got the uh, software, diversion, uh, software version for each device. These are all up to date at this point. It also has the serial number next to it for each device. So you can keep track of your devices this way as I'll talk about in a minute. If we scroll to the right, you can see that there are some slave devices in some of these. The command station has no slave devices. The UI92 and the two throttles has an RF24. Now the RF24 is the little hardware uh, um, unit that takes care of all of the duplex communications in these devices. So it needs to be kept up to date as well, and there are two separate files for that. So you have to keep track of the firmware or software for your particular throttle or command or, or UI92, and you also have to update the RF24 file as it is, uh, preview, it is occasionally updated by Digitrax. Um, now, as I said earlier, you can use this serial number uh, on the left here to uh, keep track of your devices. For example, if you're at a convention and you know that your throttle is 537C, you can select it and then hit this identify key here. And what happens is the word identify is displayed on your throttles display. So you can find it amongst 10, 20, or 30 throttles connected at any given time. You can do the same thing with the command station. You can do boosters. You can do UR92s. Click on the device and hit identify, and the little red and green LEDs will flash on that UR92. Same thing for the command station. The, the lights will flash on it. So you can immediately find a device out there on the local net. Uh, you can also, uh, since only active devices are shown in this spreadsheet, if uh, in this case I've only got one UI92 displayed, if I had three, then I'd know that two of them out there were not functioning. So I could use this to find the one that works, and then I could try to find out what's wrong with the two that don't work. I recently used this uh, on my uh, friend's layout to try to figure out why uh, Murphy had visited him again. Um, that's about all there is to this program. It doesn't do a lot, and it does what it is supposed to do very well. Thanks for watching.